Alright everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of Brave New World Blindfolded. So, uh, this segment, perhaps the least amount of time I've ever spent preparing for a segment, or at least a mini-segment, I spent a whopping 50 seconds on it, so <laughs> watch me mess up. And I already messed up because my cursor's in the wrong place, but you know, I'm kind of waiting a while for this guy to die anyway, so... And I came in here before deciding to fiddle around with my stuff. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to be doing yet, but for as far as equipment goes. So I'm just kind of taking a guess at this point. Probably way off beat guess. Skills. So yeah, I've hopefully equipped Rama properly. Skills equip. my boomerang, just to clip the two things at the top. I have no idea whether that's actually what I want, but you know, whatever. Equip, top, one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, I still have to do some investigating into what I actually want. I don't even remember what I put on her that was four down that I wanted on her, but it was probably something decent. The ribbon I usually shove on during solo segments because status effects are usually pretty brutal during solo segments. And you know, the, the one ribbon spread out along a party isn't too... Is, isn't quite as effective, but one ribbon on one party member is... Yep, everything's protected against, so... I don't know if that's something I want. Maybe there's nothing that she can be inflicted with during this part, but don't really know. I know there's like mesosaurs that aren't gonna like the ice brand very much. <laughs> so I don't know, I just threw on the ice brand. And there's vultures which won't like the boomerang that I get. That magically appears in my inventory. It's probably not the best thing, you know, but I never really bought any of the full moons or anything earlier, which could have been useful, probably. But I wasn't really thinking about it. So yeah, not 100% sure how long I need to wait here. Which is a pain in the butt, because... But, you know, bothering to get a good feel for how long I need to wait here would have required, like, five times as much time as I actually spent practicing for this segment. And would be unlikely to actually save me any. So... Yeah, I hope this guy just dies quickly, and I'll wait, like five minutes-ish, but I don't know when it started, so I don't really know how long I need to wait. Shoved Ram on her to continue with the Vigor build, just because, you know, MP management is hard when you don't know how much MP you have and how much supplies you have and everything, it, making it more complicated than it needs to be. Vigor build, nice, simple, you hit stuff. I know it sounds like something Goku would say, but, you know might as well. So, uh, perhaps I've waited long enough? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's not a disaster if I haven't. Might as well go in and check. And even if I haven't, the time I spend going in to check will run the, will bleed the clock a little and help me out. All that time I spent equipping and Hopefully that'll carry me through. Well, I'm talking to Sid, alright. Now, the question is, is Sid living or is he dead? <laughs> oh, good. There we go, I'm talking to a corpse. Yeah, like I said, like I've been saying quite a few times during this playthrough, cutscenes really don't have any emotional impact when you can't see them. So yeah, now I'll end up on the mountain. No big deal. It, the mount, this is a surprisingly straight mountain, and it dumps me directly at the foot. Uh, it, not directly at the foot of it, but uh, at a place where I can just walk straight up and make it all the way up. So that's very handy. Take one step back down, now talk to a different corpse. 
and no menu trick is working, so... A different theme will play when the, it gets to the end of this cutscene, so I'll know when the cutscene's over. There's just two steps left, all the way up. Don't need to talk to the letter. It's not so important to hear Sid's last words in a blindfolded playthrough, because you don't really hear Sid's last words, you just see them, and I can't, so, you know. I feel like it should be getting to the end soon. I knew it, because... I don't know. I just kind of felt it was getting close to the end. It was, uh... I figure I somewhat instinctively know from the music in some of these th where it's gonna end soon. Say, so I've often felt earlier when a cutscene is about to end, but I can't really, but I haven't really been saying anything every single time. There we go. I'm not sure why it's menu tricking. I knew this this music would come up before the end. Forever Rachel, even though Rachel's not relevant to this cutscene at all, but you know, whatever. I can actually talk to the raft from all angles, which I have to be honest, I wasn't 100% sure I'd be able to do that, but it should make it a little bit easier if I mess up. I'm not sure if I walked far enough there, but... You know, perhaps I'll read Sid's letter after all to make sure that I'm in the house properly. Oh no, that's not good. Okay, I don't think I left the beach. I probably just ran to the battle. One, two, way up. I guess that's a direct result of spending a whopping 50 seconds preparing for this segment. There we go. That was as expected. Sid, did you have to make your dying words so long? Hurry it up already. Alright, mash A. Walk kind of slowly because I don't want to walk past it by mistake by hitting my buttons in the wrong order. Presumably made it down to where the raft should be, so let's do the menu trick, and I believe I have this. I have it in the bag. And I just have to wait until I reach the shores of the opposite end, and then the second half of the game can really begin. I'll probably call this segment a Tizen. There's no reason to call it here, that's for sure. A whole 50 seconds to repair, a whole 5 minutes to do, and, you know... Most of that was sitting there, so... I don't think that would make for exactly a very exciting segment, and I'm probably... I want the collapsing house by itself, so there's no way that I'm gonna be... dumping the walk into that portion. The walk should be pretty easy anyway. Hopefully I'll make it... be able to make it to Albrook consistently without encounters, because otherwise that will probably be annoying, but... you know, I'll probably just end up holding A, you know? You know how it is with the blindfolded playthrough. When in doubt, hold A. A is a very powerful weapon in a time of need. So, here we go, I have made it. And I'm being an idiot because I was in the relic menu, so I probably just shoved a whole bunch of equipment on the wrong places, but... Save. Well, that's it for that. See you next time. Okay, well, this uh, part of the segment took a little bit more playing than the first part, but uh, I think I'm probably good to go now, so... Skills, less, and now magic, all the way down to the bottom. I want float here, because there's some landslide being used around by the enemies around here, and that's a good time for float, I guess. Skills, less, 
and now up to Esper. I forgot that this is probably going to be my best opportunity to level a bit without uh, Setzer getting his greedy little mitts on Seraph. So, might as well take this opportunity to bump up Celeste's HP and MP a little so that she can be a more effective healer. Most, probably mostly out of combat given that she's bigger, but there, there will probably be a bunch of situations where I want to have her slip into a more magic oriented role just for the fight so that she can be a healer. So it'll be useful there too. So scroll down to equip. Celeste, equip, first slot. And I accidentally equipped the Atmo weapon at the end of the last segment, that's kind of a no-no, so... We're going to throw the... Uh, flame Tongue, I hope that's in this slot, onto there. Down two. And scroll down to the Mystery Veil, because... I automatically threw on the Gold Helm when that wasn't the best option. Relic, Celeste, Equip, bottom slot. And I also want to throw in the Black Belt, because that's pretty handy when every single attack is oriented at Celeste. She's got lots of times to counter, so it's a pretty good thing to have in this area, especially since it also prevents her from missing. So, one to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Eh, figures. Well, uh, the whole day tactic. All I've seen around here are Lunarises and uh, Mesosaurs. Mesosaurs are chumps. It's kind of risky being in the front row, but not super risky. Not for one fight, so. Oh, I was. And I. There's a landslide, so these, the, uh, there was a nail, there was a landslide, but Sus is still doing okay, probably. Especially since that's another guy dead, and now I'm going to kill another guy dead, so... Oh, I threw on the electric blade. Well, whoop de doo I didn't get Lunarises anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now does it. Five. Not much to do there, but count steps. The only other... the only walls to go off of are way off in the distance, so the only other option would be to, for me to run way off in a wild blue yonder. Well, perhaps it's more of a wild purple yonder. World of Ruin, but, you know, details. The battles around here, uh, I wasn't worried about that one fight, so I'm not exactly super prepared for it, but... And I'm going to be equipping myself with a slightly different setup before I enter another fight. Okay, so... Up to the shopkeeper. I think he's one to the left. Buy. Two up. And I'll take two of those. Thank you very much. Nothing useful with the armor shop. It's all the old crud that I got. could have gotten before. If I didn't get it before, I'm not going to get it now. So, walked out of the armor shop. All the way to the right. No NPCs there, except for the ones that aren't moving, sitting around the campfire, toasting some marshmallows. Now they're making me hungry. I want some of their marshmallows. Too bad I probably won't be able to find my way back there if I try, so... Yeah, it would probably be a poor plan. Now this old loser is still in my way. Could you have please died in the apocalypse? Thank you very much. That would have been very nice of you, but nope. Or you could have just died in the old, of old age in the year that passed in between. committed suicide. I wouldn't get any pointers from Celeste on that. She didn't do very well the last time she tried, but you know. One, two, three. Now hopefully I'm lined up with the E. There it is. This guy is right here. So, knit, buy, two down, back guard. Now, pincer attacks and back attacks. So, so annoying. I think... I'm not sure if this is my first opportunity to buy one, or if I just missed it in the maze like an idiot. But, there you go. It's kind of an important thing to have, because... I cannot tell for the life of me. There's the door. Now... 
last time, well, two times ago when I entered this relic shop, I left by the front door, I mean, by, by the same door I came in, and that was very easily feasible because I could run all the way down, run into a Magitek armor guy sitting there in front of the dock that prevented me from going in there. But now I can't do that because that's awkward, and the last time I went in a I went in the relic shop. I didn't need to go all the way out. I just needed to go sleep in the inn. And then I went, proceeded from there. And then I actually did want to go down to the port. But thankfully, now that all the NPCs have left this cafe, it's now perfectly reasonable for me to get through here instead. So that makes it a bit easier to get back. I suppose there's a clock up there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. And I don't know if it has an elixir. Perhaps I should have checked that in my practice run, but, you know, perhaps I'll come back if I find out there's an elixir in the clock. That'd be super irritating, though, to one up, to go around the railing, cross the stairs, should run into a giant china cabinet. Fortunately, there's not much of a good way to figure out where I am right now, but, like, no good way to double check. So I want to go left and down. This is for quite a while, actually, because I'm mostly just moving in one direction at a time. Either left or down, but not really both. But I slip all the way behind these tables here, and then... And I'm busy slipping behind tables. And up uh, making it all the way to the back end and not running into a chair somewhere, which is actually kind of lucky. When I was testing this, I, I thought for sure when I... I would try to walk across the cafe, there would be just one random chair in the way at a table. It catches me in an L-shaped area. Left and down, won't, wouldn't really deal with it, but nope, I got kind of lucky, I guess. So now this should take me to left of the uh, giant staircase here. It's not too giant, I suppose, but whatever. All the way up, all the way right, and down the staircase. And now I wish that left and down would carry me all the way out of here, all the way to the moon, but it doesn't quite... I miss the door by one space, which is unfortunate. So I have to run le left one and then all the way down, and then I can start proceeding left and down. And that takes me out of the cafe, down the staircase, and then eventually into a wall. Now, if that somehow all went down without a hitch, I should be very close to the exit now. If it didn't all go down without a hitch, I'm probably at the bottom left of the relic shop, which would be super irritating. But... Alright, up a bit, left. Yep, there we go, made it out. Didn't really need to worry too hardcore about where I ended up after the up, but it seems to have worked out correctly. Uh, no, don't go equipping random stuff again. I have to remember. I mean, I was in the well menu again. And knowing me, I'm going to do it after the next segment. Well, I probably won't be equipping a relic in the next segment, but I'll be doing it with my quit menu. And by segment, I mean mini segment. Let's stop talking now so I can end the. Well, let's finish off a third of these mini-segments. This one shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Skills. Equip. Equip. First slot. Down two. Down two. This... This was another, like, minute and a half planning session. One, two, three, for just how this would work out. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yet again, no real good way to do this besides count steps, but I didn't even get any counters during the counted out parts, so that just makes it really easy. Nothing around here is gonna be able to really touch Celeste with double rising sun back row. She's regioning about as much HP as these Mesosaurs are hitting me for, and she'll probably region a tick almost every time they hit me because she's countering with the rising suns and killing them each time. Landslide does nothing. And, yeah, so... This is just complete shredding. Now that I actually am properly equipped for the world of ruin. 
but the downside is she can't really handle the encounters in the desert all that well, so if I happen to get an encounter on that step, I'm probably just gonna die. Nope, I didn't. I told you I'd forget. I told you. <laughs> And uh, that was short. <laughs> Probably should have shoved that in the last part, but wouldn't want to lose that to an encounter in the desert. So, see you next episode.